Hey everyone, it's Louisa Tanner-Munson from Feel Good Astrology. I've got a Feel Good conversation that is awesome. <laughs> and my guest today is somebody I've only just met. Uh, I've been connected with her on Facebook for quite a while and I've really admired her very bold um, and what appears like a really true authentic voice. You know, when she's communicating um, the energy that is put out from the things that she's saying it just seems so clear, so pure. And I was really curious to get her on the show. She is an Akashic Soul reader. She's um, a spiritual ascension, liberation and embodiment guide. So essentially what she's doing is she's helping fellow light workers and star seeds find themselves on their awakening journey. So let's bring her on, shall we? Uh, my guest today is Emily Elizabeth Clayland. So it's my absolute delight and pleasure to bring on Emily Elizabeth Cleland now. Um, Emily, how are you doing? Thanks for joining me on the show today. I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're really welcome. I mean, you've been on, you know, when you like see people on social media and they catch your attention and you think mm, there's something, there's something I want to, there's something I want to connect with here. And, and when we first became friends on social media, I mean, this is the first time we've spoken in person, isn't it? Yeah. Um, there's something about you that made me think, okay, I, I need to be in contact with Emily because there's something for us to explore. And um, yeah, I just had that feeling with you. And so what I'd really like to do is, is find a little bit about you, I guess. I don't know much about you. We're in completely different time zones. You're in Toronto, is it? Yes. Yeah. And I'm in like Portugal <laughs> in Europe. Um, so um, yeah, I'd like to find out how, you know, our lives are connecting and touching. So um, what, where I'd like to start really is to find out how you came to be um, doing what you're doing now you know what was what was the journey like yeah okay well it's it's quite the journey I guess um, I've been on this path for approximately like 17 years or something like that so it's been a while um, oh, yeah. anybody who's on the spiritual path knows it's there's a lot of twists and turns and <laughs> and hills and you know things that we have to traverse um, as we, I don't know, as we just become, I guess, as we cleanse and clear away the things that we're not and become, you know, more of who we are. And so, yeah, for me, um, I had an awakening experience in my young 20s. And that was a result of just like uh, a, an, an accumulation of painful experiences and choices that I was making, kind of self-destructive choices. And um, it just led me to a place where I was just asking God, like really, really sincerely and and passionately, you know, like when you've got like nothing left, it's kind of like, you know, you're on your knees in that in that kind of surrendered state. And that's what led me to ask God, like, OK, who am I? Why am I here? What's all this about? Why is this so painful? you know, as I cried myself to sleep one night. And then literally the next day, I met somebody who um, was actually working on the house that I was I was living at at the time. And there was a connection there of some kind. I mean, from from his perspective, I, I was like oblivious to everything. I didn't really care. I'd kind of like given up. Um, and And he just felt inspired to like to connect with me and ask me, um, if I wanted to, if I wanted to connect and have like a tea or something like that. And so, um, that night we, we chatted and I basically just told him my whole life story and he just listened and it was really beautiful. I, I'd never felt that like heard before in my life. And I just like spilled everything. And it was just like, you know, I was just telling him, like, I don't feel like I belong here. I feel very different from everybody. I feel like I just see everything differently. I don't want the same things that everybody else wants. Um, I just I just didn't feel like I belonged or like anybody really could understand me. And that was like kind of the beginning place for me where I then he became kind of like a spiritual teacher mentor to me where he would 
he totally understood. And he just looked at me and he said, you're a light worker. And I was like, huh, <laughs> what's that? <laughs> and like, it's the first time I heard that term. And at the same time, it just resonated so, so strongly in my being. And so he would suggest readings and stuff like that for me, like books and, and things to watch. And through that um, guidance mentorship, I started my spiritual path. I started just like connecting with my higher self and my guide. I don't, I don't know if I knew that at the time, but I was really being guided, like study this, look at this. Like I had some out of body experiences. I had some interesting, um, yeah, just interesting experiences, I guess you could say. I felt started to feel presences around me. Um, and then I guess I started to, you know, learn about quantum mechanics and quantum physics that like how like the world is not solid. And like that was like blowing my mind. And um, I I think one of the first books that I read was um, The Lightworker's Way by Doreen Virtue. And sh she talked about, you know, teachers and healers. And at the time when I was reading that, I was like, that's what I know I am. I know I'm a teacher. I know I'm a healer. Um, and so from there, it's just been like a evolutionary journey and path of like, you know, kind of transitioning and transformation. Um, a lot of the things in my life changed, you know, after that, and they were already on their way to that, which is why at the time I felt really alone. But um, yeah, it was just like everything started changing. I started getting new friends. I started joining like psychic development groups with other women who like had similar gifts and I started um being guided to do hands-on healing you know my hands were like burning all the time I'm like why are my hands burning and they're like you're a healer you need to learn how to like channel that so yeah I started that 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 way um learning some energy healing techniques and stuff like that taking courses studying all about the chakra system and and how energy flows and all of that so that was, yeah, that was the beginning stages. Um, and then that led me on many, many journeys. And um, eventually I came across, I knew like after doing all the studies that I did and working with clients, doing the energy work and stuff like that, I knew that there was something more. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what that was, but I was just like, there's something else. There's one more thing. And then I exited, um, kind of like a, I don't know, a relationship that I was in that wasn't in alignment with my highest path. I exited that. And then again, like the day after the next few days after I found the Akashic Records work. And that's where I started studying the Akashic Records and learning all about the different soul groups and, um, you know, past life stuff. And, you know, I'd learned about that before too, but this was more you know, there, this was more streamlined and, and, um, it really, really, you know, I, it's like, it resonated with me on the level of like, I already know this and it's just like coming back to me in a way. Um, so I started with the, uh, studying and learning about the Akashic records. I started working with clients really, you know, enjoyed that. Um, and then, yeah, that, that, that was it. That was like, okay, that's the last piece. And now it's like, now everything needs to kind of integrate and work together um and then from there it's just been like a, a journey of kind of dissolution and and dissolving of like the ego programs and this and the wounding and the trauma and all that stuff that that's kind of in the way of our greatest embodiment or our greatest expand expansion and so yeah then and um i'd say that probably started happening over the last few years where i started learning and diving more into that stuff and that seems to be a key because it's like you can have all the spiritual knowledge and wisdom in the world but if you're not like anchored in your body in a healthy way grounded and connected and and clear right because like our energy is our perspective is always influenced by the lenses that we have um, imposed upon, you know, our templates. And if we, if we, you know, in order to have the most clear perception, we need to be able to remove the, the influences, right. And the things that are kind of false or illusion. And so that's, that's the journey that I've been on for the last uh, few years. 
So I hope that answers your question. I mean, I could go on and on about that. No, no, it's an, it's an amazing and really engaging story, actually. I mean, what I really like about it is, um, first of all, like this imposter syndrome that you had, you know, feeling like an imposter, like feeling like you don't belong here. Um, I know lots of people that feel like that. And I certainly, uh, I just... You know, you know, lots of people talk about their past lives and, and they, they know that they've been on earth. I've never even felt that sensation. I've always felt like I'm new here. I, I probably am not, but um, it's such a, a strange experience to feel so ungrounded. <laughs> and like, what, yeah. what am I doing here? Um, it's so interesting because like all, like I work with a lot of star seeds. I'm sure you've heard the term star seeds, yeah. right? Like yeah. our origin is elsewhere. And we kind of come into this physical incarnation, physical body on this planet. And, um, you know, for many, for many reasons, but yeah, a lot of the star seeds that I talk to have that same experience mm -hmm. and they feel like foreigners, <laughs> you know, yes. they feel like they don't belong here. Like why, is, why are things the way that they are here? It feels so backwards. It feels so mm -hmm. like archaic, uh, the way things are done here. And I just don't seem to belong here. I don't seem to fit into this. And um, there's there's souls who come from like parallel dimensions who who feel that way. They're just like, where did I land? Like this is so awkward here, and I feel so awkward here. And so yeah, it's it's mm -hmm. it's amazing because yeah, we all seem to kind of there's a collective of us, right? So it's like we all seem to kind of attract one another because there's a certain energetic, a certain frequency. It's like a like a I don't know something that we're giving off constantly right and it's like oh you're not I from here either it. you're not from here either I know I know you I know how you must feel you know yeah. so it's cool because we all kind of collect together and and it's like we just know each other and that's why you're probably feeling like that connection with me you know because it's like oh when when you come from a different perspective or you've activated certain qualities within your being there's just an instant resonance, right? It's like an instant connection, a heart coherence. And, and it's just like, Oh, I already know you, you know, that's really cool. Yeah. yeah. And then um, I, I also, um, you know, when I, I feel like that with somebody, I always think, wow, they've, they've got something to share. You know, there's, there's something there that we're both going to benefit from, you know, and, mm -hmm. and for me, it's all about the stories um, that we can, really get a, a greater context for our lives and <laughs> through the stories that we share with each other um yeah. but I love that yeah so the imposter thing I, I really love that um you know when you were surrendered asking God who am I um why am I here so beautifully and gracefully uh, that things turned around you know and, and you felt like almost like some someone was by your side holding your hand um and and then you know you're describing how there are all these um, modalities that are coming into your world, and people had to show you that you know you're a psychic reader and and that you could do healing. You know you had these guides showing up to show you. But what I really loved was when you were talking about the akashic records. That one thing that you knew was going to change it. When you spoke about that, you said, "I already know this." Mm -hmm. So it's like everything else needed a bit of a prompt, but with that, you were like boom, there you are in your truth. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm wondering now that I'm looking back, if, if I felt that with, with all the other stuff, like I already know this, I guess, no, I didn't really have that experience. It's interesting that you, yeah. that you picked up on that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, when you feel like I know this, I know this, I'm getting mm -hmm. so much. Um, you know, when you had that sort of sense of, I know this all of a sudden, it opened up even more, um, which I often find, you know, the people I speak with, they have that kind of experience. Um, mm -hmm. You're talking about dissolution. I, I see that coming up a lot at the moment um, with the clients that I'm working with. We're all kind of letting go. And, and I say we because, you know, the kinds of clients I attract obviously have a resonance with me. So I always see us as being part of a team, you know, the people I'm working with. Um, and also the people I'm chatting with on uh, on these shows, you know, we're all part of something, and I think we've all got a responsibility for each other. So, how does dissolution? How's it arising for you at the moment? 
and the people that are in your uh, circles. How is it what, sorry? Arising for, Arising. for you and the people around you. Um, yeah, it, it is an interesting thing, right? It is definitely something that's um, coming up more and more. Uh, personally speaking, I feel like um, a very powerful light energy or information is kind of flooding our, our planet right now, our solar system, our bodies this it's really intense this light uh it's very um like it's very potent in a way and it's really coming in and, and kind of inserting itself or injecting itself and 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 as it injects itself it like it needs space for that right it, or it creates space for itself and whatever is in that space prior to or whatever is in the way of that is kind of um you know pushed to the surface or it's like it's it's um it's rejected out it's 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 ejected you know and so that's what's happening on the planet that's what's happening in our solar system that's hap that's what's happening to ourselves you know our bodies um and our consciousness and so as that light kind of comes in and penetrates everything we're seeing a lot of the shadow the dark the um misaligned you know the inorganic the inverted the distorted yeah all of the kind of things that have been um i don't want to say infiltrated but like imposed or implemented as limitations or structures or you know restrictions to our consciousness and our beings and our us our, our total embodiment of of our divine self right yeah. so as this this light comes in all of those things need to kind of be removed or cleared or healed or transmuted right and mm -hmm. that's kind of what i refer to as like a dissolution or a dissolving of these things because it's like it doesn't really stand a chance with it within this light and and we're moving into this you know those of us who have chosen that ascension pathway which i'm sure you know there's like those two pathways or three paths that have emerged over the last couple of years this whole global event has been like an opportunity for us as a, as a being to choose what where we're going to find ourselves on that um journey right and so if you've chosen the ascension path then that's the path where all of that stuff has to go and so it's going to be brought up to the surface it's going to be brought into your conscious minds through relationships through experiences in your life through you know health issues or whatever um and maybe it, it it's you know it can be really challenging you know for a lot of people because it's like oh it's like you're now being faced with stuff like face to face like looking in the mirror at, at your shadow and being like oh you know, I don't want to see that. But right now it's like we have to, right? There's no there's no real other choice. We can't deny it, we can't repress it, we can't suppress it, we can't um turn our you know, turn our face away and look look the other way anymore. We have to really stare it in the face and and go through the, uh, whatever process serves us in and you know, embracing it and loving it and and clearing it and healing it whatever and in, integrating it, dissolving it. Um and so that's what that's the journey that I've been on, like I was saying, like for the last few years, where because I'm actually I have like one of the best, <laughs> one of the best assets in this journey, because I'm with a partner who's literally like my twin, who like is my perfect mirror, who shows me everything. So it's been an intense ride that way, but it's also yeah. so helpful, right? Because it's like there's somebody right there all the time who's showing me like where I'm at. Um but, you know, even if you don't have that, you're going to have people in your life who show up in, in service in that way, too. So, yeah, it's really about this purging that we're doing, this clearing. It's like we have to look at all the things that were kind of keeping us contained, keeping us restricted and limited, keeping us in that loop, you know, that kind of mental loop that is full of like all the ego garbage <laughs> that, you know, that kind of chatter that goes on that influences us right 
And so, yeah, the journey is about being becoming aware of those things, which is we're really being helped right now because everything's being amplified by this in, incoming light. Yeah. And it's it's about really becoming aware of that, not judging it and not judging ourselves for it, which like who's really good at that? I know I'm not really good at that yet. Um, and, <laughs> you know, that's that's always the goal. But um yeah, just like becoming aware of that, not judging it, loving it, you know, being in gratitude to the circumstances that brought that to us. And then in that way, we can, you know, integrate it, dissolve it um, and and move forward in a more embodied state. Right. Because as that stuff gets cleared away, more light exists there and more of who we are can exist there. Yes. So that's the journey. That's the process that I, I see. I know myself as, as on it and I know like all my clients are on and, and, you know, I'm sure you're on as well, obviously, cause you're doing this work. Um, so we're all kind of on this journey of ascension, which is just like a deeper embodiment of who we really are. And in order to do that, we have to like see and clear the stuff that we're not. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's a, a beautiful description. Um, because you know in in bringing the light in you are enlightening aren't you you are becoming more and more enlightened exactly. um, and of course the more light you bring in the more anything that is not light comes up and it comes up faster and faster yeah right slap in your face and you're so right you know right now we can't we can't afford to ignore it it's facing us it's daring us um so what kind of tools do you think we've been um, relying on not face our darkest aspects of ourselves all these years distraction is one of the biggest things mm. so anything that distracts us um that can be i mean everyone knows like what is it there's tv there's there's phone like our phones our social media um sports like anything that's really engaging our focus and energy and time that's not really connected to this stuff right it's 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 a distraction um you know creating drama in our lives that could be a distraction um so yeah though distraction is the major thing um there's also been such an assault on the human mind and consciousness emotional body um that i don't think people realize the depth and breadth of like it's the psychological manipulation has been so intense especially over the last few years it's been amped up because we've come to that choice point right it had to be become that way um but i don't think people understand really at the level of deception and manipulation that's gone on um on this planet you know in regards to human consciousness and so we have been our our consciousness our awareness our 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 physiological state has been assaulted i guess you could say to such a degree that a human being now is so different from who they would nat naturally naturally be without all of this so you know it's like we're operating at such a lower compa capacity than what we are naturally or or would naturally be able to without all of the you know the influencing um mm. and and so yeah i think um just the emotional like trauma and wounding and stuff that's happened on this planet and that lives in our cells and in the collective field that we all access and interact with right it's like this stuff really that can that can distract us too because it's like we're dealing with illnesses we're dealing with you know mental emotional um you know i i, I don't want to say illness but yeah i guess like unwellness right we're we're dealing Dis with disease yeah we're dealing with all these issues that if this wasn't kind of a um like a psychological war place or war zone 
um, we wouldn't have to deal with. It would just be like, okay, we can go and live our lives and we can be happy and we can be free and we can be healthy and we can create and we can generate. And, you know, there's like, there's a whole other template and organic way of living that would naturally be there if there wasn't all this kind of imposition of, of certain energies. Um, so, so, so I'd say, yeah, distraction is huge. Um, as something that people use to, to not look at things, um, creating drama. So like, you have to look over here instead, right? It's like, oh, I've got all this stuff happening over here that that's like engaging my mind and energy, um, instead of looking within, right? There's a lot of blame and a lot of projection and a lot of looking outwardly and trying to change the world or trying to change other people so that we feel okay. When really <laughs> that's like the opposite, right? Yeah. Um, and yeah, what else? Um, obviously, addictions is another one too, right? Addictions, and that that kind of goes into distraction. But like, addictions would be another thing, right? It's like we're addicted to certain things because we feel a certain way, and 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 it, it makes us it soothe something within us that if we didn't use that substance or or thing that we do. Um, we would have to feel that thing and then that we would have to look at that thing, whatever that is. Right. Um, so yeah. Um, I think that's, yeah, I think that's like, it's a huge chunk. (laughs) It's a huge, like, yeah, if we look at those things then and and deal with those things, then yeah, we'll be, we'll be good. Mm. Yeah. Um, I was I was looking at some of your old posts because um, I mean they were the things that first kind of really drew me into wanting to speak with you, um, and and um, in one of your posts there's this bit that really stands out for me and you're talking about having the courage of your conviction, you know regardless of consequences, you know like really living it and and kind of finding your backbone, <laughs> you know and and, and knowing um, what it is to to be. Um, Christ-like or or to be um, I guess just aware of what's going on what's being played around you and and you mentioned about the manipulations it's it's really funny actually and I, I, I'd be interested to hear if, if you've got a similar experience I spent um, probably about 15 years being slightly wary and afraid feeling that um, I was being watched or um tuned into or tapped into mm-hmm. um, and around the time of um, March 2020 just before that that feeling started to ease off I, I was not etherically looking over my shoulder as much mm-hmm. and then as this whole thing's gone on even though everything has gone from well it was, I mean the the manipulations have just gone whew, and just spun into such a frenzy. And every time I, I mean, I don't, first of all, I don't really look at the news, but my husband does. And so, you know, I pick up a fair bit of what's going on. Um, But even though these stories are whipping up, in my heart, I actually feel clearer um, and less afraid. And I felt a lot less afraid. Um, And I've been speaking so much more in these last couple of years about actually what I truly feel and believe. Has that been the same for you? I mean, I, I think that's because of the arrival of the light, that there is we're being bathed more in light. And so if we're ready for it, you know, we know we're safe. Did, did you ever have that feeling that maybe being yourself wasn't very safe? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, big time. Um, you know, you nodding when, when I said I felt like I'd been tuned into. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I felt that for a long time. Um, yeah, especially, okay, when I first started, when I first had my awakening journey for a little while I was like everything is light everything is love everybody's good maybe they just have like trauma in their lives and that but they just need to be loved and they'll be fine (laughs) (laughs) that like beautiful like ignorant uh, naivety that that one has when they start uh, feeling into like the energy of the hype self and god and all of that right so that's where I was. And then um, <laughs> eventually I had to kind of crash down into like the darkness and like realize, oh, shit, like not 
nothing's what I think it is. Yeah. Um, this is all a game. This is all manipulation. As bright as it is over here, guess what? There's just as much darkness over on this side of the thing. So yeah. I had to learn that, you know, I think that's part of like anybody's initiatory journey who's on the spiritual path, like seriously, right? Like you have to go through these series of initiations. And I think it's the same for many of us. Um, and one of those is like your naivety has to kind of, you have to rise into spiritual maturity. Mm-hmm. And that spiritual maturity means that you have to, you know, learn sometimes the hard way or realize that, you know, there's this duality that plays out here on this planet. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's a reason for that. And we've mo- we're moving out of that, which is why, you know, you're talking, you can talk about like, things have changed when it comes to how this feels and how you experience Mm -hmm. it. And there's like so much to this, you know, just this topic alone. Um, But yeah, I I definitely felt when I started realizing that I definitely felt like I was being watched. I was always being, um, (laughs) I was being kept monitored, monitored is the word that I would use. Um, and it's because like, once you start hitting a a certain threshold of your frequency, you're, it's like a threat because you're then breaking free of a certain, um, container. It sends sends out a signal, doesn't it? Yes. So there's a certain energetic net, let's say, or container that we exist within. And once one starts to come to the threshold of that, rise their frequency and awareness to the threshold of that, there's like, yeah, it definitely creates a certain uh, tension <laughs> or it, it brings attention towards you. And, mm-hmm. and to be honest, like, and I've had conversations with people about this before, like even prior to incarnating or when we incarnate, there's, there's awareness of us, you know, mm-hmm. it's just many of us as children get, um, I don't want to say attacked, but we get focused Shame. on well, we get focused on as children, a lot of us who are here to do these things, bring the light, right? Um, because there's more, they want to give us more of a challenge so that maybe we won't rise. Maybe we will we'll be so traumatized or we'll be so whatever, whatever, that we won't actually rise into our, our purpose. And maybe that's worked in the past, but in this particular lifetime, that's not actually you know, we're, we're a lot of us, many of us are stronger than that. And we've come out the other side stronger. And like, you know, there's so many different dimensional perspectives that we can look at this from too. Like one of them is like, we've chose that, you know, we chose to have those experiences as well so that we could help more people and in, in a deeper way as well. Um, and just grow or evolve as a soul or whatever. There's so many different ways of looking at that, but, um, so there's, there could be awareness of us even as children. So I know a lot of big light warriors who, for example, were, um, you know, abused as children, like either sexually or physically or emotionally, whatever, by their parents, by caregivers, by, by, by people who were there when they were in their most vulnerable place. Cause really that's like, if you're going to, destroy somebody that's the best time to do it right when they're most vulnerable in their most precious innocent place so that's that can be a thing for for um, light workers or light warriors um that they've had that kind of experience as a child and have had to come out the other side um and that's also good too because it's like rising into that empowered state right um But yeah, there's definitely a sense when you hit a certain awareness or consciousness that you're being, there's like a target on your back. And I felt that a number of times because I could see through all the deceptions that were playing out. I'm like, I know that targets on, like when things would happen globally, I'd have such a clear awareness that like that was intentional and that was was a ritual. Mm. And I would know that. And then immediately I'd feel that same thing. And here's the cool thing. Um, And you said March 2020. So actually, December 21st, 2019. So the solstice. Yeah. 
um before 2020 i felt something a big energy coming in november yeah. that year i was yeah. like something big's coming it's gonna happen i don't know what it is but i felt like the energy is coming out yeah. and i saw like the pyramid like the energy coming like i saw the pyramids being activated again and like i just like i felt this huge energy and um december 21st so so the winter solstice here i was guided to kind of do a little ritual so i like covered my body in um castor oil and i got mm -hmm. into the bath and it was just like all of a sudden i just started like opening up and channeling this wow. this voice and it was like it was like i didn't even like it was just coming through me and it was like changing dna structures and like it was just going it was like literally go, i was going through all the animals all the everything that like exists here on this planet and it was just like I think like there was light language, there was like movement, there was like all this cool stuff happening. And the main thing that came out of that was like um, an integration or a downloading activation, whatever you want to say, like of the Christ Sophia template. Mm -hmm. And it was like, that was being reactivated in my system. And that's like, oh, that's the sacred masculine divine feminine merging in this like sacred union or heros gamos. That's, that's what came to me. Like now I'm, um, it was like an alchemical marriage that occurred within my being. And for me, what that represents is that um, those templates have been activated on the planet. Mm -hmm. And now the, those of us who have chosen this path are, are have access to that within our, when our, within ourselves and that creates a collective harmonic energetic field and together as we all merge that right um the christ energy is so it's like it's like there's nothing can touch that the christ sophia energy it's like the purest energetic and and that energy can't be tampered with it can't be messed with it's like when you bring in that christ energy you're good and so I believe that that's that activated that energy on the planet. And also, um, like you said, that light was coming in and that's what I think it is. It's like that light's pouring in, it's activating us. We're holding those frequencies now. And therefore, you know, so there's many things at play too, because there's cycles and times and stuff like that, that this kind of energetic warfare dynamic can play out. Um, like there's an ending of that that's yeah. happened, right? So we're just kind of playing up the last bit of that. Um, but it's, you know, all these things are kind of interacting with each other and it's layered and it's kind of, you know, it's complex in a way. But yeah, that, that Christ energy has come back to us mm -hmm. and, that, and the planet. And therefore it's like that darker energy or heavier energy or denser energy or whatever you want to call it, it can't exist within that realm, that energetic. So it's like, we, it's like, we've come together and we're like, no, that energy is just a no. It's like, we love you. We wish you the best. We thank you for your services and no. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, and unless that energy is willing to transmute and, and, and move into an integration process of its God self, then mm -hmm it's like, it has to, it has to evacuate. Mm. And that's, you know, and that's something that's going on multidimensionally throughout this planet. Cause this planet is like, you know, there's lots of different, like there's internal worlds and like, you know, mm. multiple dimensions living within this planetary system, I guess you could say. And so mm. all the lower density vibrational energies have to evacuate. Yeah. And it's like, we're stronger now, right? We're stronger now. We, so they don't have the capabilities and capacities to do the things that they want to do to us anymore that they've lost, you know, they've mm -hmm. lost, they've lost in a sense, right. If we're looking at it from that perspective. And so, yeah, like in a way that liberates us, that liberates our consciousness and we don't have to be always feeling that like that like somebody <laughs> looking at, over our shoulders or like there's a target on our back or whatever. Yeah. And I also want to say one thing to this, because this is actually, this is, this is kind of fun. I mean, it's very controversial, but I'm sure you, you you're aware of this as well. Bring it um, on, whatever. 
<laughs> this is fun. It's fun to 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 be able to share this. But so there's th these different cycles and time frames and stuff, right? That are going on on the planet, and we've come to this time where it's like, okay, the split has happened, and so there's this ascension pathway and then this descension pathway uh, where we're becoming more uh, returning to our God self and where we're um, the de descension pathways like we're actually there those who have chosen that are kind of moving into a dissolution of their um, let's say individual soul essence so they're dissolving back into the one thing and then that, that will begin that evolutionary journey from the beginning again um, and or that transhumanist journey. So they're becoming less of a human, less of their divine self. So it's like you're becoming either more or less of that and more kind of like AI, so to speak, or yeah. you know, artificial. Um, yes. Yeah, but, our DNA is valuable, isn't it? Our DNA is sacred. Yeah, yeah, it is. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to stop you. No, that, no that's okay. Um, so, so, those paths have ar uh, arisen for us and one of the coolest things that happened for me was like okay i i like 100 percent think have always thought politics are bullshit and i've never really participated like i think when i was 18 i voted once for like the green party and then like eventually i'm just like this i, I know this is bullshit, so why would i do anything here um and yeah, so I, i've it, only voted once <laughs> yeah. and i've been <laughs> yeah exactly and then you're like okay let's see what's going on here um so back in 2016 when the whole race was happening with um in the in the states mm. i was like oh my god i roll like this is so pathetic and so fake and so phony and like this whole charade is happening right and then <laughs> i didn't care like i didn't care either way who won or whatever and i just knew like I knew that like it's just all bullshit and then the next day after i found out who won mm -hmm. which was surprising to me i didn't think that i thought the other person would win when i found out who won i was like i felt like this relief in my system it was like oh my yeah. god and this lightness and then i i, I like cl i'm closing my eyes and i'm seeing my guides and they're like celebrating and like you know jumping and like just like so happy mm -hmm and joyful and they're saying to me like we've won we've won mm -hmm. the light um what did they say they said the world will now be free mm -hmm. the world will now be free and uh i was like what <laughs> and, I was like, huh? Come out? <laughs> yeah. and then as i was being you know i was surprised by that information um but yeah i really like i felt it in my being it was like something just like landed and i was like oh like we're good now we're we're good and then i went online and i saw all these other people talking about like all these other intuitive psychic people talking about like how good this is i'm like wow like so surprised um and also like happy because i'm like okay so this like whatever happened like opened up a whole timeline trajectory for us that was different from what was supposed supposed to happen yeah and which would have been very dark let's say <laughs> like a lot or more of the same or either more of the same or worse and i was just like oh my god i just i don't even care because it's like i can't you know at that point it's like well like what can i do about it you know it's like most of the world is like dead fast asleep believe everything they're told and like you know we're the minority kind of thing right it's like nobody cares what we have to say nobody listens to us anyway so like who cares we're just gonna like create our own lives and do our own thing um but then when that happened i was like okay we've got a foot up we've got a foot up and then obviously you know the whole bullshit like ensued with like just creating more division in the, in, in the community and um you know people just getting like you can't even say that name anymore like you're, no. you can't even say that name without people jumping down your throat because um, <laughs> it's been so programmed but um yeah that's that's the information that i got and again like i had no attachment to politics or anything like that but now um 
like you're saying, like we're like, I, you know, we're at a place where we've had to like really hone who we are and really, um, yeah, like stand in our conviction of what we know and, and, and speak it with, with that clarity and speak it with that courage and speak it with, from that place of, of knowing inside of us and, and not be afraid of what other people say and not be afraid of what other people think or what the consequences will be like, because, you know, as these frequencies continue that journey of, of bifurcation, Mm -hmm. the people who are meant to jump on that path with us will, and they'll find us and we'll find them. And it'll be like a beautiful reunion, you know, of heart centered, aware, compassionate, creative, generative, loving humans. Mm -hmm. That's where we're going. And then the people who, who can't accept certain things about, about reality, or if they're living based on like programs and, and just like what their minds have been um, manipulated into believing or, or, or a perspective that they've been manipulated into seeing, like, it doesn't really matter what they say or do, like they could unfollow, they could say mean things about you, they can, you know, reject you, they can uninvite you to certain events or tell, you know, that's like in my family, it's like, oh, only the only the double, triple vaccinated yeah. are, are, are invited to Thanksgiving this year. It's like, okay, you guys yeah. are the ones missing out. <laughs> you guys are the ones missing out. But okay, we'll, we'll go party over here, you know? Um, so as that happens, you just have to kind of know, like, and and I, I feel like I've been forged in that fire, you know? And I think all of, a lot of us, many of us have been forged in those fires of like um people's opinions and people's judgments and stuff it's Mm -hmm. like you have to come to a place where like you know yourself so well that that stuff doesn't it doesn't it's like water off a duck's back it's like first of all i know what you're i know where you are i know where your consciousness sits i know the the perspective that you're look like the lens that you're looking through Mm -hmm. and i know completely inaccurate and it's not even yours it's basically something that has been imposed upon you and you're not actually an, an individual sovereign being with your own conscious thoughts like you're literally just regurgitating things that you've been told mm. to believe or ways to think or whatever amongst other things like you know all the all the shadow and trauma work that people don't do when they're coming from that perspective um so it's like no offense, but like you're, and I think I wrote something like this once, you know, I'm just like, no offense, but like, if you haven't gone through this experience, like this awakening spiritual journey, your, your, your opinion means nothing to me because it's just, it is just, a, yeah, it was really bold. I was just like, I said it with no charge, but it was really like, it's just really being honest. It's like, like, I'm sorry, but like, unless you are coming from a place of like, clarity and sovereign thought and um awareness there's no value there there's no value you know um for me personally speaking Mm -hmm. their opinions their perspectives because they're literally just speaking from within a very um yeah like just program state and 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 I know those programs are meant what, what they're meant to do. So um, yeah. that's why I can be as bold as I am now with things that I say, because I don't, it doesn't phase me what people think of me in that, in that way. It doesn't phase me. And like I'm saying, like I said, like, I think that's been over time and definitely over the last couple of years, right? We've really had to own, okay, this is who I am. This is how I see things like things got so intense that it's like, no, I have to speak about this. Like, I'm just compelled to speak up about this. I can't just like, you know, like let, let other people do it. I need to say something here. Yeah. And when that energy is there, it's like, you have to trust that, right? Cause that's like your higher self coming through. That's God moving through you. And that's the energy we need to spread on the planet. Right. And it can be it can be bold it can be fierce it can be penetrative mm. um and some people might not like that and that's okay yeah. guaranteed 
<laughs> <laughs> and that's okay. So a lot of people might be like, oh, I don't like her because mm. whatever she thinks or says or does or whatever, but it's really, it's like how I'm making them feel with what I'm saying, because it's, it's hitting a truth within them that they're not ready to uh, accept yet. And that's why you'll have a lot of people shunning you because they're not, you, your code, your frequency, who you are is a, an embodiment of that truth. And that even in the presence of that, people will feel that and they will be incredibly challenged and triggered by just your frequency and energy alone. And I definitely find that um, always working on that, like softening and compassion and, and love. Like I can be quite matter of fact sometimes and not always as like understanding of like just the gentle nature that would actually be more you know supportive to, to people's um unfoldment or openness mm -hmm. to this kind of stuff so you know thankfully my partner's got that in spades and so i can learn from that um yeah but yeah that that's <laughs> yeah yeah that's awesome um that's really really awesome um I feel like I could talk with you for hours um and yeah I think I'd, I'd just like to you know invite you back another time and we can we can talk some more especially yeah. as we go further into this awakening time because I mean um it's interesting we were talking about November December um you know, I'm in touch with a lot of astrologers and leading up to that time, and, and in particular, January, there was this huge conjunction and every astrologer mm. you know, worth their salt would have been seeing this coming up five, 10 years ago and thinking, oh my God, something massive is going to happen. And I was, I, I was like having not bets, but kind of open discussions with people in the community and saying, what do you think it is? And not one of us said, a pandemic but we were all saying like a system control and something you know and that's why my husband and I uh, moved over to Portugal mm. you know four years prior because we could see that it was going to be a bit of a sinking ship in the UK for a while wow. <laughs> like, yeah. oh my god you know let's go somewhere rural with a better climate where it's cheaper mm. to live and, and work part-time and kind of fly under the radar as much as we can yeah um, and we've kind of gone into hiding a little bit, um, but just giving ourselves options, I guess. Um, so, you know, there are these massive waves going on astrologically, but, you know, I feel it, you know, as energy anyway. I mean, it's just it's just one way of perceiving it. But um, I, I think I've just forgotten what I was actually going <laughs> to say. But um, I just love I just love your clarity, I guess. Um, I love your clarity. I love your spirit. I really love how straightforward you are as well. And and I do I do agree, you know, um, it has been a time where we've been challenged. Um, I, I found myself shutting down in, in um, April, May 2020, because as I was saying, hang on, something's not, something's not adding up. Boy, was I being rejected and, you know, pushed out and whatnot by family, friends, people that I've known for, for years and years. And it's take, it took me a long time to realize that actually their opinions don't matter as much um you know and 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 just to really con concentrate on my own vibration and and helping the people that do come to me um yeah. so, you know, it's, it's been a huge challenge <laughs> but also yeah. massive gift it's as well. still hurts, right it's so painful when you get rejected or shunned or exiled yeah. from, from people that are supposedly your family or supposedly mm. love you or you've known your whole lives like it still hurts yeah. no matter what right mm. I think that's the story of so many people over the last few years, right? It's sad. Yeah. yeah, I know so many people who have um, just gone their separate ways. Um, mm -hmm. Lots lots of people. I mean, as I see it, um, I, I'm seeing that people are finding out where to position themselves right now. So lots of relationships are ending. Mm -hmm. Lots of people are moving around locations. Um, okay, I've got one final question before, um, before we catch up another time. And that is... How are things in Canada right now? Because obviously, I mean, I know it's a huge place, but how has the spirit of Canada changed in recent times? I mean, I was watching um, the reports from sort of independent uh, citizen journalists um, as much as I could. But, you know, what's what's going on there right now? Because everything's kind of gone silent. It has. Yeah, it's really interesting. Oh, hmm. I 
I mean, it was it was a it was an amazing time during that during that you know collection and connection of everyone standing up and standing together. Like I just had goosebumps and tears of eyes like for so long <laughs> while that was happening. Just so beautiful to see people coming together in that way, mm-hmm. and like you know, to be honest, not expecting that from my country, from my, cause you know, everyone's kind of passive and, and just like, you know, just like polite and goes along with things and just really easy going and whatnot. Um, so that whole movement was so such a shock to me and also just was so beautiful. Um, and I think after what happened in Ottawa with our um, current prime minister, like, I think people got pretty down about it. I think people lost some hope because it's like this huge momentum of energy, mm-hmm. you know, and people are standing up for the people and like, you know, the truckers and like, there's finally somebody saying no to this bullshit. And like, and then all of a sudden, you know, it's being twisted and it's being, you know, it's, it's just being like, it's again, being used to cause this like division um and yeah I think like people are just in a way kind of like well no matter what we do it's going to be used it's going to be it's going to be changed and used for 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 this purpose you know like we're going to be um we're going to be shamed we're going to be um you know the whole thing is going to be kind of um what's you became became domestic terrorists exactly so it's going to be like twisted in a way that like puts us in like in a bad light yeah that's so frustrating for people because it's like we're doing such good like such good you know Mm -hmm. and we're standing up for the right thing and here we are being labeled these things and people don't understand this people like a lot of people did and saw through it mind you and I think for a lot of people, a lot of people woke up because they were seeing how much the media yeah. was facing it because they went down there and they were with people and they saw what was going on. And they were like, OK, I see what the media is doing now. And it's like it brought awareness and consciousness to more people. So that was a positive thing. Um, but, yeah, it can be like kind of like discouraging, you know, to have such a momentum, such an energy rising and then just like that to be like taken out. Um mm-hmm. And, you know, it makes you think throughout the history of humanity, right? Like all the things that we've learned, all the things we've been told, like who was spinning that story? You know, now we have to question everything. You have to question yeah. all of the things you were told about history, who did what, what the, yeah. their personality was, what their intention and motivation was. You literally have to question everything because we see the, the, the propaganda machine for what it is, right? um but the energy is like i mean i'm kind of i'm kind of in a secluded place right now so it's kind of hard for me to to say um but yeah that division's still there there's still people who believe that like the unvaccinated people are 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 less than um Mm -hmm. even though there's literally no difference (laughs) like there's no difference um uh there is there's one difference I've noticed, and that is um, I notice um, from people I'm connected with who, you know, have gone with the narrative um, that they appear to be in this um, deep concern about their health, mm. you know, themselves and, and getting really like nervous, you know, you know, they're 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 not acting freely you know when they want to go out they're wondering if they're going to catch something whereas all the all the people that i know that um have not followed the narrative um i've not noticed anyone worrying about their health at all in fact they're very secure in themselves yeah yeah so that's one difference i've noticed but you know you're right yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> i think that's been like the way that it has been throughout this whole thing it's like no we're looking at like the truth of things and then we're looking at what's being projected as things and then it's like well if we're looking at the truth of things and we're actually good like we don't have to freak out we don't have to do all these weird things we good you know and plus you know relying on our bodies to do what they do and move yeah. into that. um anyway 
that's a whole other that's yeah. a whole other can of worms. But um, yeah, so I think there's a lot of still a lot of division. I think the people who have chosen to go the narrative way have a lot of pride in their choices and a lot of resistance to opening up to the truth. Um, although that's not true for everyone. I think that some people are opening up to the truth and all of that. Um, but yeah, that energy seems to have dissipated. And I don't think, to be honest, that, that that's the end of things for sure. I think like, obviously there'll be more movements and there'll be more energies and stuff, people rising again. And it's just a momentum that's going to keep collecting more and more people. And it's going to keep building because, you know, if this is the year of, let's say, disclosure or where like more truth keeps coming out, eventually people will have to see the truth that like this was intentionally designed and this was meant to be a lot worse than what it was. And um, you have been, you've been, um, used you've been used and so when that truth starts coming out then i believe that more and more people will continue joining the cause to fight for the good of humanity for the liberation of humanity and for me when i said like back in 2016 when my guides are like you know the world the world will be free now the the planet will be liberated now not because i feel like it's because of trump liberating the planet i just feel like that timeline was what's happening it's a now. switch yeah it's like it's like now it's like stuff will start coming to the surface and we're going to start seeing like the collective of people coming together and standing up for something and realizing holy shit like we don't live on a free planet we live on a planet that's totally controlled and hijacked and mm -hmm. and the people running things do not in any way shape or form have the best interest of humanity or the planet at heart and that truth will eventually start coming out. And one of the things that I got shown when I was asked, you know, what's the energy of this year? It was like, I just saw all of our heads being held like this. And 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 we have to, like, there's something that we have to look at. And we're like trying to look away. And we're like, no, I'm not gonna look. And our guides are just like, no, you're like holding our eyeballs open. Like, no, you have to see this. And so for me, I don't, you know, I can't say specifically what that represents, but for me, it, it represents like, no, like we ha we're going to be shown some things that might be hard yeah. to study and hard to digest, but those things have to be seen. Right. And that's just the process that we're all undergoing, like this global purging, this um, process that we're all in. And, and so as that continues, more and more people will gather and come together and stand for the right side of humanity. And, you know, it's not going to matter how the, how the freaking media spins it because we're they've lost pretty much all credibility anyway from like oh good yes. people but it's just going to become more and more obvious to people because the consciousness and awareness of the planet, the light which is you know that information that that expanse ex expansive um opportunity for us um it creates that that like oh like i used to see it this way and now i can see it for what it is you know, gives us that opportunity to kind of take a, a new look at things. Um, and that's what one of the things that we'll all be seeing is that all the stuff that we're told through these certain streams of things are um, false and, and illusion and, and, and propaganda essentially for, in order to manipulate us. And so, yeah, I, yeah. I think you said it really um, well when you said we've all been used you know, we've been farmed, haven't we, since birth? Yeah. Pretty. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And once once that comes out, I mean, it, I don't know if it's just like a personal thing that you come to and you realize or if it's like something that it will actually come out. I don't know. But either way, when people wake up to that truth, it's it's a tough pill to swallow, you know. Um, but, you know, there is hope. There is promise. There is like be a lot of beauty at the same time, you know coming into things and uh you know from what i've seen you know in toronto there's still a lot of people who are like literally driving around with masks on in their cars by themselves or oh. walking outside by themselves with their mask on and kids doing this um which is really sad to see but 
I mean, yeah, I mean, it just goes to show you the degree that people have been influenced and manipulated, you know? Um, and like the one time I went to the store, it was just, I usually like, I, I don't, I don't wear masks anywhere. I haven't like this whole time. Maybe if I go somewhere like a hospital or something that I need to, I will, but, um, you know, grocery shopping, I'm usually the only one in a mask or without a mask. And everyone's like always jumping back for me and like, you know, moving out of the way and like, or they'll say something yeah. snarky to me or whatever. Um, but the last time I was there, there was four people without masks and they're all like really interested in talking and friendly and, and, yeah. you know, asking like, um, you know, I had like a little tag, a little badge and they're like, where did you get that? You know, kind of thing. And so that, people there are people who don't want to do don't want to follow the rules anymore and they're the rules and they're wanting to 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 get back to their kind of let's say normal existence um so yeah it i think to, like it's still very divided but i i think um more and more people will be will be jumping online for sure yeah especially this year i think like this year is going to be intense yeah. <laughs> I have yeah. that feeling, you know. I'm just like, okay, some and I talked to another like psychic intuitive the other day and she's like, I feel something big coming too. And uh it feels good. It feels good, whatever it is. But we were both like and we weren't trying to figure out what it is or anything, but we we're both like, Yeah, it feels it feels like it's gonna be a good thing. So who mm -hmm. knows? We'll see. But it's an exciting time. <laughs> it's an exciting <laughs> time, right? Yeah, yeah, it really is. Um, so if somebody's been listening today and wants, you know, they want to connect with you, want to work with you, what's the best way for them to reach you? How would you prefer that to happen? Probably the best way is like through social media. So um, find me on Facebook. So it's Emily Elizabeth Cleland. Um, and then on Instagram, it's EE -E Cleland. Um, yeah, that's probably the best way. I I have a landing page that I have my services on, but it's kind of tricky to find. So if you message me or, or whatever, um, I can send that to you. It is also on my Facebook page somewhere. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, if anyone is interested um, in the in the work that I do, that's, yeah, that's the best way or even just connecting to share or whatever. Mm. That, that's the best way to find me. Excellent. Yeah. excellent well thank you so much for coming on today i've really enjoyed it so yeah. much <laughs> thank you so much louisa for reaching out and connecting i i always love you know connecting with soul fam yeah so thank thanks for following that impulse yeah thank you so much so that was an absolute pleasure. I absolutely loved that. Um, we had a, a good old chin wag at the end there. Uh, so lovely to speak to somebody um, who understands, you know, the idea of imposter syndrome, you know, the idea that um, we've not necessarily felt like we belonged here on earth because um, that's, that's how I felt pretty much my whole life. Um, and so finding belonging um, is interesting. So it's great to you know, to connect with her on that. I absolutely love what she's saying about dissolution. I 100% um, back that up as well. I mean, in my experience in working with the clients and, and speaking to the other healers and teachers and um, basically good eggs, you know, we're all confirming really similar things right now. So I am absolutely certain that this year um, that I'm recording this in, which is 2022, um, is a year to be reckoned with. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you want to connect directly with Emily, then please do connect with her on Facebook or Instagram. All her details are below. Let us know what more you'd like to hear about. You know, um, if there's something you want to hear from Emily or, um, you know, if you've got a a suggestion for somebody for me to interview, then please do pop it in the comments. I really, really love any interaction you give me. It's it's fantastic and it really helps our show. Anyway, lots and lots of love to you wherever you are in the world. Thanks for connecting. Bye for now.